This video addresses questions about a particular strategy or approach for playing a role in the accordion. Our policy at Roxy's is not to make claims that one is better or more correct than any other. Our role is simply to help you make the most informed choice to meet your needs. After posting previous videos where I made use of what many people generally refer to as a saved multi-part song orchestration approach to playing an electronic musical instrument, we received several questions. One recurring one is, exactly how, when using this approach, does one play on stage a number of previously prepared multi-part orchestrations that have been saved to USB memory? Is it inconvenient to bring up different songs? Is it a complicated, tedious, or time-consuming operation? Absolutely not. Although in principle the process is very much the same on many other models of the accordion, as well as electronic keyboards, in this video I will demonstrate how it is done specifically on the FR4X. But first, in order to set the correct context to my demonstration, I must say a few words about the different possible approaches to playing the FR4X. Please bear with me. Initially, before anyone actually begins performing in front of an audience, they must of course turn the instrument on and perform some minimal instrument setup, the exact nature of which depends on playing strategy. In a set-oriented approach, I may have to navigate to a particular set. Of course, I can very easily configure my instrument to boot up with my favorite set automatically selected. And that's great if I intend to play all my songs using the very same set. But if I wanted to play within another set, then I'd have to navigate to it before playing my first song. I might also have to activate a certain read combination. I could then start playing. As I play, if I want my performance to include orchestral variety, I would have to select it myself interactively. For example, I could select different read combinations by pressing register buttons, as one does on an acoustic accordion. Or, if I want to switch from accordion read sounds to orchestral tones, I could press the orchestra button, and then for extra variety, different register buttons, and so on. In contrast, if I were using a user program approach for playing the instrument, I would activate the user program mode by pressing the user program button and then select my desired bank and user program location. If my user program was well designed for the song that I wanted to play, then appropriate read combination, orchestral tone, or percussion patch would all come up automatically. So I could just start playing immediately. To add variety to my performance while playing, I might interactively press the accordion, orchestra, organ, or percussion buttons. However, if I wanted to change accordion read combination, or perhaps orchestral tone, I would not be at liberty to press another register button. Remember, I'm in user program mode. Doing that would activate another user program, perhaps one intended for playing a completely different song. Still, it is possible to introduce such variety by pressing the user program button again, thus taking me out of user program mode and bringing me to a special memory space called the working area. The working area would then contain exactly the same instrument feature conditions that existed in the user program, but now within the context of a set. So now I can select various read combinations and orchestral tones just as if I were playing using the set-oriented approach that I described earlier. To then play another song, I would press the user program button again to return to user program mode, followed by a different user program location, one that represented whatever new song I wanted to play. Another scenario is the user program bank approach. I once again activate the user program mode and then my desired bank, which this time represents the genre of music that I wish to play followed, of course, by selecting a user program location to act as a starting point. And again, such things as a read combination, orchestral tone, and percussion would all come up automatically. So I would just start playing immediately. To add variety while playing, 
I might again press the orchestra and organ buttons as desired, as I did when using the user program approach. But since I am now using a user program bank, and if that bank was well designed for the genre of music that I'm playing, I can now press different register buttons to produce more extensive orchestral variety than was possible using the previous user program approach. That's the whole advantage of such user program banks. In the user program bank approach, all 14 user program locations can be selected at will to provide orchestral variety that is appropriate for playing any song within that particular genre of music, like polkas, for example. Other banks might be designed for different genres, like waltzes, German folk, weddings, jazz, whatever. The possibilities are endless. As you probably already know, the FR4X provides seven banks of user programs, each bank containing 14 user program locations, for a grand total of 98 user program locations. Note that a standard FR4X shipped from the factory already comes with a full complement of example user programs. These are listed in Roland's official tone list document for the instrument. Another solution that many V accordionists take advantage of is the famous Richard Knoll user sets and user program banks for the FR4X. Roxy's will install these for you if you wish when you purchase an instrument. Just ask them. To find out more about Richard Knoll's product, visit his website. Richard also provides some very impressive performance demonstrations of himself using his user program banks at his YouTube channel. I provide links below in the text description section of this video. By making use of either Roland's standard factory sets and user programs, or those from Richard Knoll, most V accordionists quickly master the instrument playing approaches that I have described so far, and they gravitate to a playing strategy that works best for them. But all these previous playing approaches have the limitation that the number of instrument sounds immediately available are limited to 14. And although there are some operational tricks that can allow you to quickly jump between user program banks in certain limited situations, thus giving you access to a few more selections, you are not really at liberty to choose from the instrument's fully loaded total of 287 orchestral tones. Of course, I'm not saying that you would want to play that many sounds within a single song. Please, give me a break. Each song might use only a few. However, perhaps when playing certain songs within the same genre, like perhaps Red River Valley, Home on the Range, and a dozen more songs in the country category, you might like different sounds for each song. And why not? Your instrument provides them. Another limitation of the previous playing strategies is that you need to remember exactly where certain sounds are located on the instrument. A certain sax sound might be available at user program location number 5 within one bank and at user program location number 12 within another. Another user program bank, depending on its intended genre, might not even have a sax sound at all. This brings up an interesting point that applies to many things in life. Exactly how many individual details can any average person remember? How many names? How many phone numbers? I'm told that an international chess master might be able to remember thousands of individual game positions. Few people can do that. Hence, the limited number of international chess masters. Some musical instruments require similar mental skills. Have you ever seen the organ at Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, France? Obviously, any average person would be overwhelmed trying to remember the exact purpose of all those levers and valves. Hence, the limited number of people who can play that instrument. But as electronic musical instruments like keyboards and V accordions evolve to having hundreds and eventually thousands of tones and dozens of different ways to control them, they can also seem pretty overwhelming to the average person. 
But along with the evolution of these electronic instruments is an evolution in playing strategies that can allow average people to easily deal with their complexity. The saved multi-part song orchestration approach is such a strategy. Using this approach, user program banks no longer represent particular genres of music. Rather, an entire user program bank is dedicated to playing one particular song. Second, user program locations are no longer viewed as representative of the specific sounds that they produce, but rather as the various orchestral parts of the song. In the process, songs become much easier to play. An example video called Beginner Level Six-Part Orchestration, FR4X, that I posted earlier in this channel will help you realize this. I suggest you watch that video. When planning how to play that song, I decided to start with accordion musette reads. I therefore saved that sound within a user program bank to user program location number one. For part two, I wanted an orchestral clarinet. So I saved that sound to user program location number two. For part three, I wanted accordion reeds and orchestral clarinet layered together. I saved the required selections to user program location number three, and so on. After completing my orchestration work for all six parts of the song, I then exported the entire user program bank to USB memory. With that initial work completed, to play the song in front of an audience at any time in the future, I rely on my FR4X to recall from USB memory all of my original orchestral decisions. The example video that I asked you to watch earlier is the familiar student practice piece, Ode to Joy. It's not an impressive example of playing skill. It's not meant to be. It's just a simple practice piece that shows how anyone, even a beginner, can use the saved multi-part song orchestration playing technique to produce higher quality performances. Now, consider for a moment how this affects my playing of the song. For one thing, it eliminates the mental effort required for me to remember all of my original decisions on what exact orchestral tones to play in different parts of the song. Those decisions were made in my practice room when I first learned and orchestrated the piece, a time when I was relaxed, a time when I was free to try different sounds in the instrument's entire sampled sound library of 287 tones to see which ones were best suited in each part for the mood that I wanted to create. Not a time when I'm standing in front of an audience, a time when I'm more nervous and hence unable to recall how I originally wanted to play the song. A time when I might have immediate access to only 14 orchestral sounds within a single set, user program or user program bank, rather than the entire 287 that the instrument provides. The multi-part song orchestration approach also eliminates the mental effort required to remember where certain sounds are located within the various sets, user programs, and user program banks on the instrument. Register buttons on the instrument no longer represent sounds per se, but rather different parts of a song. To be clear, let me emphasize that I no longer have to say to myself, let's see, exactly which sounds did I use the last time I played this song? And possibly worse, where exactly are those particular sounds located on my instrument? Was it in Bank 3, User Program Location 6, or maybe Bank 5, User Program Location 13? Who knows? Although a few virtuoso level accordionists have the mental skills to recall large amounts of such details for individual songs, most ordinary folk, the intermediate-level music hobbyists of this world, like me, cannot. But that should not mean that I can never play well-orchestrated music to family and friends or even to audiences at certain public events. It turns out that most people, myself included, 
are able to remember the structure of many songs, that is, the parts of their musical construction, and hence, when standing in front of an audience, it is an easy matter to play the parts in sequence. Register button 1 for part 1, register button 2 for part 2, and so on. Simple, don't you think? Using this playing strategy, my FR4X no longer seems as complex as the organ at Notre Dame Cathedral. An additional advantage of the Save the Multipart Song Orchestration approach is that each part might call up multiple orchestral changes simultaneously, an impossibility while remaining within a single set or user program location. It is, of course, possible when using the user program bank approach, but those exact same multiple orchestral changes would apply to every song that I played while using that bank. The result would be that over time, my music within a certain genre will lack variety from song to song. In contrast, the saved multi-part song orchestration approach allows me to easily apply unique variety chosen from the instrument's entire sampled sound library to each song that I play, without me having to mentally recall anything special. I simply select register buttons in sequence. And of course, I'm not locked into playing it only one way. I can go back and forth in my orchestration, pressing register buttons in whatever sequence I want. It's my orchestration and I can play it any way I like. However, saving parts to locations in numerical sequence has the added advantage of being able to select them using a pedal unit, like the Roland FC300. That's how I did it in the example video with Ode to Joy. Now that I'm confident you fully understand what the saved multi-part song orchestration playing strategy is all about, I can get to the whole point of this video, which is to answer the specific question. After playing one song, how can I choose and import into the instrument another song that is stored in USB memory? The current situation represents the instrument immediately after playing my first song, Ode to Joy. As you can see, the display indicates the user program location of the last part. Note in the upper line of the display how I saved the number 6 in the title, thus reminding me during my performances how many parts I should play. I now press the user program button. The instrument responds by bringing me to the import user program utility. Are you surprised? I'll bet you were expecting the working area, weren't you? So, how did it know to do that? Well, that's because I previously used that utility to load into the instrument the song Ode to Joy that I just finished playing, and it remembered my place in the menu system. I press the right arrow button to continue. The display indicates that it will import a user program bank. Again, it remembered the exact operation that I completed last time when I imported Ode to Joy. I press the right arrow button again to continue. It reports that it will import into Bank 1, which is the one I find most convenient to use for this purpose. I press the right arrow button to continue. Using the plus and minor buttons, I am now able to scroll through the various song titles that I have previously orchestrated and saved to USB memory. The titles are sorted in alphabetical order. How about this one? Camp Town Races, a practice piece from Book 2 of the famous Palmer Hughes Accordion Course. I press the right arrow button to continue, followed by the Yes Enter button to confirm. Presto, the song orchestration loads into user program bank number one. I press the user program button, followed by user program location number one, and I'm ready to start playing. That was quick, wasn't it? By the way, I see from the title that it is a 12-part orchestration. Why so many parts, you ask? Well, if you're familiar with the song, 
you know that it is a perfect candidate for numerous voice changes. Of course, you may want to orchestrate it differently. Anyway, do you want to see me import another song? Again, I press the user program button, the right arrow button three times, and then I can scroll through the titles. How about the one called Dream Song? It has something special, a backing track, as indicated by the letter B in its title. I press the right arrow button, the yes button, watch it load, and then the user program button, followed by user program location number one. To start the backing track, I press the play button. If you are a user of backing tracks, I suspect you will make heavy use of this ability of the FR4X to automatically find and play the correct backing track for each of your song orchestrations. I can continue in this same manner playing as many orchestrated songs as I like from my performance library on USB memory. But now suppose I no longer want to play an orchestrated song. Suppose I want to play using either a user program or a user program bank oriented approach and I'd like my bank one to be returned to its original condition. No problem. I simply import my backup file of bank number one. Now when I return to user program location number one, I will get the familiar Roland default user program called Classic. In a similar manner, you could bring back any user program bank that was originally installed by the dealer where you purchased your instrument. So, now you know how previously saved song orchestrations can be imported by title from USB memory and played on the FR4X. I have demonstrated the procedure to be both easy to remember and quick. Of course, I have not demonstrated exactly how one would orchestrate and save songs to USB memory in the first place. There's only so much that I can do within the space of a single video. Besides, the procedure for saving various instrument feature selections to different user program locations, as well as how to export user program banks to USB memory, is well described in the reference manual and you only have to learn such procedures once. That's right. Once you know the procedure for saving and exporting one of your orchestrations, you've essentially learned how to do the same for all of them. The procedure is exactly the same in every case. I have also demonstrated in this video how on any of today's modern electronic musical instruments, different playing strategies may be used in different situations. Obviously, I cannot play song orchestrations that I have not yet created. Also, depending on a person's playing skill, many songs may sound perfectly fine in a set, user program, or user program bank approach. Personally, as an intermediate level music hobbyist, I tend to use a set-oriented approach for practice work and general playing, and a saved multi-part song orchestration approach for my best performances. By formally orchestrating certain songs, even at my intermediate skill level, I can much more easily deliver higher quality performances. Still, how you choose to play your V accordion is, in the end, up to you. As I said in the very beginning of this video, at Roxy's we do not claim that one particular approach to playing is better than any other. They differ simply in their ability to support your particular needs. Before leaving, there is one last advantage that I would like to mention about the saved multi-part song orchestration approach. 
Since they can be so easily saved as standard user program bank files, they can easily be shared between musicians. For example, instead of just posting one of your performances on YouTube, you could also allow viewers to download the orchestration file and sheet music. Sheet music that not only provides the music to be played, but indicates where in the performance to switch orchestration parts. I'm not talking here about simple user program location files that represent only a starting point for playing a song, but rather complete orchestrations whose various parts can be easily selected via the register buttons or the FC300 foot pedal unit. Although the publication of music arrangements in this form has not yet taken hold in the V-Accordion community, it is already well established in the Yamaha Tyros keyboard community. The fact is, many intermediate level music hobbyists who don't have the time or talent to create complex orchestrations themselves are willing to pay good money for well-prepared arrangements of popular songs that are within their playing skill if they are published as orchestration files with companion sheet music that is properly formatted, notated, and easy to read. Sheet music created using professional notation software like Finale or Sibelius. It seems to us at Roxy's that this represents an opportunity that any sufficiently skilled V accordionist could take advantage of. Not only could it be financially rewarding to sell your arrangements of standard accordion pieces, but you could establish yourself as a leader within the V accordion community of this new evolving playing technique. Everyone at Roxy's wishes you success on your FR4X.